Welcome back. Now, activists have hailed the gazetting of the Criminal Law Amendment Act. It, also, it orders convicted uh, offenders cannot be released without having their DNA samples taken and added to the DNA database. Uh, but will this help solve cold cases and discourage re-offenders, especially in sexual violence cases? Well, let's discuss this further. We're joined by Vanessa Lynch. She is the director of DNA for Africa. Thank you very much, Ms. Lynch, for your time here on ENCA. Just firstly, explain something to me. I was just discussing with the team. There's something that confuses me a little bit in terms of this amendment that has been adopted, of course, by Parliament and still needs to go to the NCOP. I was under the impression that if someone is already convicted and is serving time for something like rape, unless the evidence that saw them there was circumstantial, if it's DNA, we should already have that DNA evidence from when they were convicted in the system. Is this not what's been happening this whole time in South Africa? Well, that's a great question because there are two aspects to that. The first two years of the DNA Act's promulgation, we were in fact able to take convicted offender samples. And that two year expiry period, following that, we weren't able to take convicted offender samples. I don't know why they put a two year limitation in terms of the Act, but we've been fighting since that time to reinstate that provision that we can take convicted offenders. In the interim, we can take from arrestees. And if that results in a conviction, yes, they will already be in the database. Mm. However, there are a number of convicted offenders who haven't had their sample taken at a arrest, arrestee stage. And those are the ones that we need to put on the database. We've seen substantial um, links to serial offenses as well as court cases when we put a convicted offender's profile into the database, even in respect of unrelated cases. Mm, and of course, this is a very uh, great move, and I'm sure you would agree as DNA for Africa. Uh, but you know, we're, we're a country that has a lot of problems. One of those problems is a DNA backlog. <laughs> and we have many, yeah. many prisoners in our prison system. And I wonder if you have any concern yeah. about the fact that we already have a backlog, and now we must, uh, you know, uh, put a test or rather take DNA from all the prisoners who are convicted in South Africa, which goes into the hundreds of thousands. Mm. You know, certainly you, you, you raise a great point in that the backlog is indeed an issue. But the backlog is largely with regards to the crime scene samples, which are fairly complex cases and require a lot more stages in the DNA analysis process. Mm. A reference sample, which is a simple buckle swap, is, is actually a much shorter process and it's it's basically automated. It doesn't require a lot of intervention or sample prepping. And therefore they have got lanes, they call them lanes, um, three in, in Cape Town and, and two in Johannesburg or Pretoria that can um, that can that can really navigate a lot more samples through those those automated systems. Mm. The backlog is really specifically with regards to rape cases, um, largely due to the complex crime scene samples that have to be processed. In addition, we hope that the government continue to pursue public-private partnerships, certainly with reference samples, where the chain mm -hmm. of custody is not an issue. Um, I think this might be a good gap for them to, even if it's a sunset provision over a short period of time, um, embark on a private partnership um, with, with other laboratories to assist with capacity. Mm. And of course, uh, this you know, your, your initial reaction to this must have been gr good. You must have been supporting this. And uh, I guess uh, because in South Africa we've seen, especially during the course of this year, how many people reoffend. So this probably will help yeah. in terms of our efforts to deter reoffends? Absolutely. Um, you know, we, 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 we've seen studies now um, because, uh, you know, throughout the world, DNA analysis has been used, you know, quite prolifically. And they're now starting to see that it has a great deterrent effect in terms of serial offences. But one of the great things is that it actually saves, um, saves lives because if you're able to identify a serial offender, um, it really does prevent them from, from attacking again. And we've, we've, again, you know, even in our own database, where somebody has been arrested for a common assault, we've seen them linked to up to 30 to 100 rapes. It's, it's, it's quite horrific. So th th there's a duality in terms of the importance of putting a profile on a database um, deterrent, as you say, but also identifying who the perpetrator is and preventing them from attacking again. Mm, and I guess it also, Vanessa, uh, you know, gives hope to rape survivors uh, that, uh, you, know, um, you know, maybe it can give hope to those who are scared to go report 
uh, because they're scared yes. that the person who probably uh, perpetrated will not be found, etc. If there's already uh, a database that has uh, all the DNAs, uh, then maybe it'll give hope to those who are fearful of going to report because they're fearful of, you know, a, a person being convicted mm. or a person actually even sure. being sentenced. Mm. Yeah, certainly, but I, I think there's just one cautionary measure that, that we need to address, and that's the fact yeah. that the, the president has signed it into law, so it has an act number, yeah. 8 of 2022. But we haven't seen the proclamation where he sets the operational date. Mm. And, and I've seen in the past governments pass a law and then make the operational date four years later. Hmm. And it's something that we have to continue to push. We, we, you know, the, the government mustn't, mustn't uh, sort of put smokes and mirrors around this and say, look, we've passed the law, the president signed it. But we need the proclamation to hmm. say the operational date should be immediately. And let's, you know, let's together as a public, great news, sure, let's continue to put pressure to say, make this operational as of now, so that we, we're not fooled into believing that the law has been passed, but it's not operational. Mm, and I guess, I mean, this is a president that had South Africa's first ever presidential GBV summit. So it would fall in his favor yes. if he continues on that trajectory. I certainly hope so. And, mm. and, and again, let's continue to put pressure and watch that to see that that is not a lapse of too long um, that we see it operational. Mm. And just lastly, Vanessa, just for clarity in terms of understanding, because like I said a little earlier, I thought we've always had this and you've explained that we had a two year lapse. Um, but in terms of uh, this, it, when, when the NCOP has uh, finally also debated it, signed it into law and a proclamation is handed down in terms of when uh, this act will start to go into effect, Will it also affect people who are, for instance, um, arrested at a level of being accused, or is it just for prisoners? Yeah, it's, it's, it, no, the arrestees, that was passed in January, where there's a mandatory provision that every arrestee of a scheduled offence must have their DNA sample taken, so that's mm. operational. Yeah. The, the, the urgency with this is that um, a, a, a prisoner cannot be released without having their DNA sample uh. taken. But that will continue to happen until this is operational. So day by day, prisoners will be released, they'll be let on parole, and guaranteed there are serial rapes out there, guaranteed. Mm -hmm. And until this is operational, we, we won't be able to insist that a sample is taken before they're released. And, and that's, that's why I say there's an urgent um, need to, to put pressure on the government to make this operational as of tomorrow, today, let's mm. hope. Do you think this is on, you know, a positive uh, direction to us having that list that South Africans have been asking for, including uh, sex workers, for instance, who've been asking for a sexual offenders list that will be made public so that South Africans know who the, for lack of a better word, the enemy is when it comes to cases such as rape? Absolutely. You know, this all is such a, it's a, it's such a positive move. And, and, you know, we have to always give credit where credit's due, you know, when the government takes positive steps to address GBV and, and, and address the crime in our country. But, but they need to complete that loop in order for us to really see the benefit of it. Um, and I know they're addressing the backlog, they put funding, they put maintenance contracts in place, consumables are in place, but there's more that they can still do. Um, and yeah, uh, you know, let's move, we're moving in the right direction, but there's still a long way to go before we really are on top of our crime issue. And serial offenders, the early identification of serial offenders, is possibly be one of the greatest assets that, that we have in terms of a database, and we need to really be using it to its best advantage. And we haven't quite seen that yet. Um, and that's something the government needs to really get on top of in 2023, for sure.